Hello, and welcome to the Performer's Guide. My name is Kristen Rayling, and today we will be discussing monetizing your brand. As a performer and a small business owner, your business brand and personal brand are often intermingled in a way that is indistinguishable. And it's important to understand what exactly the elements are that make up a brand so that you can consciously put effort into developing and enhancing, tightening and solidifying these sections over time in a way that allows you to have a tight brand. So what is a brand though? Oftentimes people are confused about what personal branding is or means or how they can um, even begin to define this for themselves. And the best way I can describe personal branding is it's the way you use your identity to differentiate yourself from your competitors and those around you. Okay. Your personal branding is built up of four different categories, your personal beliefs, your digital branding, personal brand identity, and the ways in which you monetize your brand. So in this webinar, we will be discussing each one of these and how you can utilize them to build your brand. The first thing you're going to want to focus on and think about is that your brand does not come from the outside in. It comes from the inside out. And it is a way for you to authentically express who you are on the inside in a way that allows you to create partnerships and deep, meaningful relationships with people who need your services mm -hmm. and whose core values are in alignment with your core values. So one aspect to focus on first is a concept called your Ikigai, which is a Japanese term for finding your life's purpose. If you can identify your Ikigai from the beginning, this will help you identify and solidify your personal branding in a way that also fulfills your clients' needs in the value proposition that we discussed in the business model canvas section. Your Ikigai is developed from four different questions that you can ask yourself while developing your brand and developing the offerings and services that you'll be creating for your target market. And these four questions that you want to ask yourself are, what am I really good at? What do people pay me for? What do I like doing? And what do people around me need? When you can answer all four of these questions in great detail and then map them out on a graph the way that it is shown here, you can start to identify 
the areas of your life that you can utilize to gain monetary compensation while providing a service that your community needs that also fills you with purpose. So if you can find your Ikigai, you will begin to understand what your brand is and how to identify that and incorporate that into your life. So once you've identified your Ikigai and you've mapped out these four categories of your life, it is then important to, to understand why, the why. Start with why. Before going on with your branding, you want to stop and reflect on why it is you're doing what you're doing. And I think oftentimes people focus on what they're doing, what they're creating, and how they're going to um, offer those services and interact with their customer segments. But many times people don't stop and reflect on why they are doing things that they're doing. So before you move on to your personal branding, it's really important to have a reflection of why am I doing this? And so let's talk about the, the why here. There's two types of why. There's the internal why and the external why. And oftentimes as performers, artists, producers of services, when asked, why are you creating this for your market? And it, is responded in some fashion like I just want to or I really enjoy making art I need money I like to pay my bills I'm good at this but those are internal whys and they're generally um, if you break it down more they're selfish reasons to create a business and to produce a product and so Instead of focusing internally on why I want to create a product, you want to flip the cards again to the value proposition to why would people want my services? Why do people need me? Why would someone purchase my goods and services over somebody else's goods and services? And why would they want to be in a relationship with me and stay in that relationship over time? When you can think this way, you pull the focus away from yourself and into the community and are able to fill the market segments value proposition better and the better you can fill your clients value proposition the more successful you will be as a brand so once you've identified your ikigai and you understand why you are producing your products you're going to want to make sure that your brand is in partnership and does business with other brands who operate with the same core values as you do. And in order to find those partnerships, you have to first identify your core values. And once you can identify your core values, then the, the script isn't about sales, selling a product. It's simply about finding potential partners whose core and values match your core and values and creating strategic alliances or other partnerships to produce services or gain value for each other or for the community. So your core values are a very important, crucial part about your branding. Um, once you can identify these, then you can really start to 
project your core values to other people through your branding themes and the way that you market your brand. Then the next step is how are you going to um, tell people about your brand? How are you going to describe it, define it, and um, let people know that this brand exists? The first step is to write your own personal biography, who you are, where you came from, why you're offering these services, and um, a basic description of who you are. This is the first step to defining your brand in a way that is in engagement with your clientele. So now you're beginning to engage with your clients and expressing to them what your brand is and how it represents you. And the next step to that would be choosing your brand colors. This is not something you want to do thoughtlessly. You want to be very conscious about the way you choose your branding colors because there is an entire brand or color psychology that happens when brands choose their colors. And each color has its own effect on human emotions, our memories, and the way that we perceive a brand is greatly affected by the colors that are chosen by a brand. The next step to solidifying your digital branding is to identify what fonts will be associated with your brand. It's important to choose a handful of fonts and use them consistently over time so that if somebody were to just be scrolling and see a font and not even the words, that it should trigger an identification to your brand in their mind. And this is really important in the first step, I guess second step, the coloring and then the fonts to consistency. And this is really important with brand building is when you're interacting with your market, they're paying attention to how consistent you are as a brand. And if you have consistent coloring and consistent fonts, it lets them know subconsciously what they're going to get from this brand. And even if they aren't fully paying attention and in the meditative scroll phase, they could identify your brand by just the coloring and the fonts without seeing your logo or any of the messaging. Once you have your colors and your fonts identified and solidified, then you can start to build your logo, which is often the, you know, uh, emblem that people will remember later on when they see you. And you want your logo to be simplistic enough that if a potential client was to see it, that it would be memorable, but also linked to your brand. And so in that module, we will go over the different types of logo options one can choose from and how to combine and utilize them in a way that allows for your market to easily remember your brand, even with, again, no words or messaging marketing, your logo should be simplistic enough to be memorable long after they encounter your brand. Once you have your personal values and core values, your ikigai, colors, fonts, logos, now you can start to create a digital vision board. 
that will begin to reflect back to you your brand in a way that might enlighten you to choose your themes and the way that you present yourself physically and personally. And I love to make vision boards, especially if I'm tightening up my brand, rebranding, creating a new project that involves a different type of brand. Um, so we'll go over how to take all of the pieces and put them together in a storyboard that allows you to reflect back your own brand to you um, before you really start tightening up your marketing and um, website and the way that you market. Um, I like to create a vision board and make sure that my vision matches my personal beliefs and matches what I'm actually marketing and what the um, market actually sees. And so it's good to have the vision board, use it to market your brand and then use it as a reflection point. Is my marketing reflecting my vision? Once you combine all of these things, then you can really start to have what's called a brand identity, where people can see you and your project and your business as something larger than just you, an individual person. It now becomes something that is consistent, that is identifiable, that has a personality, that has vision and is showing commitment to, again, consistency. When a potential client is interested in a service, they wanna make sure that they're giving money to a business that is consistent and reliable. And the way that you prove that is through your brand identity being consistent over time. And so, Once you have a consistent brand and people know what to get from you, you can start to utilize this brand in a way that helps you monetize the brand. Um, once businesses and potential clients see your brand as reliable, as a source of reliable information, then you can start to utilize your brand to create affiliate partnerships, sponsorships, and become a brand ambassador with different companies. And once you do have a solid brand with good core values and your brand identity, then people will know that you're promoting for businesses that are within your core value set. And are ones you actually trust and will latch your brand onto. Um, and then leveraging those partnerships for ways to monetize your brand in an ethical way. If you have an inconsistent brand, then when you create partnerships and in this way, it's not reliable for people because they don't actually know what they're gonna get in this partnership and they don't know if they can trust you and then it also becomes um, detrimental to your partners as well. So it's really important that before you create an affiliate partnership, sponsorship or brand ambassadorship partnership, that you really wanna have your core values set in place, your themes, your brand identity and honestly your business model and plan in place so that you can, instead of going to these and trying to pitch a sale of, hey, will you monetize me? It's more of like, hey, my core values are in alignment with your core values. And if we partner up, it will benefit not only both of us, but the community at large. And that's the way I would like to 
look at monetizing your brand as not, uh, again, an internal, I want to monetize myself and make money because I like money, that it is, I have core values and I would like to create a partnership with someone who has equal core values and this partnership will benefit both me and the community. And this is what I believe is the heart of branding. It's not just slapping a logo onto words and putting colors together and then saying it's a brand. It's deeply reflecting who you are, what are your core values, how do your core values benefit the community, and who can you partner up with to make that possible. And once you know who you want to partner up with and how your strategy is going to work out, then creating a marketing strategy that reflects this plan. And so we'll go over um, the marketing strategies of a brand and your social media posting schedule, making sure that your branding and your themes are in alignment more during the marketing section. But just know that these are all tied together and you want to think about them when you're trying to create partnerships like these. And often these three are sometimes lumped together or confused with one another. So this whole section will break down what the differences are, how to utilize them for your brand, and the best ways to approach each type of business to create these types of partnerships for your brand. And so again, my name is Kristen Railing, and this is the performer's guide. This entire section is monetizing your brand. Each day we will cover uh, each topic in greater depth. So I welcome you to join me in this program. Thank you for watching.